Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham, Jason Cole, rcgroups.com is the channel. We've sent out a request for Lane out in the helicopter world. Uh, like I say, every week he could be saving someone's life. Although he told me uh, a few days ago, Jason, he said, I don't think I'll be saving anyone's life uh, at the podcast time. So be sure to ping me. <laughs> also, I want to thank our podcast sponsor, Hobby King at hobbyking.com. Slew of new stuff coming out. Jason, I was just looking at all the links on the uh, Cyclops review. The uh, was it a cub that the uh, clip ring cub that came out recently? I kind of was that it? Was it a review? Yeah, we had another review. Uh, I'll go check it out, we'll go look at it later. And uh, what does that say? What's up, Mr. Lane? Hey, hey, bro, do you even drift? Talk, it's a wing talking oh. to a wing. He, I think uh, Lane's going to be working on technical uh, difficulties, even though he's got some kick-ass garb going on. We can't hear you yet, Le yet Lane. I'm sure there's uh, tapping and things like that, very uh, high-tech stuff that you as a helicopter pilot uh, can take care of. Um, speak to us in memes. And then uh, we had a new jet come out from Hobby King as well. And uh, also, Jason, this is probably strange. But I'll, I'll get the weird uh, weirdness of the podcast knocked right out at the top. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's weird it up. Do you know who this is? Uh, that's Jack Black, my cat, right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's not weird. So uh, I Can finally got, me? yeah, we okay. read to uh, uh, 10 by 10 or 4 by 4. So, uh, so this is, we have all our animals cremated. Um, it's every time I, at one point in time, I thought, are we going to keep doing this? But it, it always feels necessary. So what I started doing without telling anyone is when I would wake up in the morning, Jack would always be wherever the sun was like, and then you'd walk by him and he'd go, wow, you know? And so that would be the morning ritual. So I started moving this box around to where the sun was. If I woke up and went to get coffee on my way in the kitchen, I would take his ashes and slide them into the sun, you know, and then evidently other people in the family have noticed it. Cause when I went to get him for the podcast, someone had put him in the front window, uh, in the living room. <laughs> so, so wow. Jack is, uh, while I, I don't think he's here in this box, uh, at least his bones and ashes are moving around the house. Like they always were. So <laughs> good on Jack. And condolences, brother. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm over it now. I, I have to say, I don't know if I said this last week, but I kept warning all the kids in the house, the cat's going to die, be prepared. And then after the cat died, I saw no perceivable difference in my children. Meanwhile, if you said his name, I would burst out in tears. So uh, <laughs> I just didn't think it was going to hit me that way. And it, boy, did it. Lane, wow. what's happening, bro? Uh, sitting here at work in a squeaky chair. You hear that? It's not oh, like my yeah. son at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah uh so i'm here at work up in aberdeen got some cool stuff going on um of course we've been flying a lot so don't be surprised if you hear my radio go nuts in the middle of this podcast but uh anyway um I'm working on a kit uh trying to get a kit done and uh, a couple of them actually and doing that i do that in my apartment when i'm not here at work so 12 <laughs> hours on shift and then i go to the apartment and build airplanes and uh, i get text messages is that are you the only guy in that apartment or did you say other people are there? No, we, uh, the pilots share the apartment. So, uh, I'm the day pilot this week, the night pilot, he's there right now. And, uh, when he comes in at seven, then I go there. So does he ever work on your, uh, your project before you come home and the wings done or something? You know, I wish he would, but no, uh, he'd probably build the wings backwards or something. And, just, <laughs> and then it would have a forward sweep to it. it wait, oh wait, <laughs> no, that would be cool. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, Lane, I've been learning about the internet lately, and so what I want to say to everyone is coming up in this podcast, Jason's going to talk. I haven't even asked him about this, but I'm assuming it's going to happen. Jason's going <laughs> to look at Jason. It's going to talk about the scimitar. Uh, is that a 250, Jason? Is that what I typed? Uh, 215. 215. And this is a hardcore racing uh, quad, and I said Jason probably is your man for that, and Jason's been flying that. I actually have a scimitar too, and I have the more consumer friendly version and I have been flying it. I, I wanted to fly it today, but I've been running, gunning, jamming and ramming and um, I didn't get in the air today, but we were going to talk about that. And then I have the cutest, most awesome lane. When you see this, maybe even you will, will shine. Um, it's a GB from Horizon 
And I, you know, if this thing were like a 40, 50 size, Jason, like a carbon, fi a carbon, uh, carbon Z. Carbon TV? TV? Oh my <laughs> God. I would not even be in the room. I'd be running around outside. But when I got this thing, I thought it's little, but I, I want to, I want a GB. I've always wanted one. And when I opened the box, it was like Raiders of the Lost Art where the light comes out of it. It's like, whoa. Wait, what movie was that? Is it like a new cat? It's like, oh, how cute. Uh, well, it's it's more badass than cute, but uh, we're all going to look at that. I'm going to hold the box up and, and show you exactly what I saw. And uh, so we're doing that. And then I have actually, I'm going to talk about what I've been working on in the last week because it is very applicable to the podcast. I don't know if I'm going to wield it all out. I may save some of the visuals for next week after Jason and I go fly a little bit. Where are you going flying at? We fly at the Edwin oh, Warner. Oh, I've been there. Oh, yeah, what? I've been there. Yeah, Lane's been there. When? <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, that was 2007. Dang. I was I not there? Was that a Hobby Lobby deal? No, yeah, you didn't come. We asked you to go, and you didn't go. In fact, I think I texted you, or else Jason yeah. did. No, you were doing, you were doing RCG stuff, Jim. Yeah. You were around. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we flew the, uh, do you remember the SRT-10? Yes, I do. Yep. See, that's where that's where we did the maiden flight of the SRT-10 with Jason's brand new DX7, which was like the thing that year. Back then, yeah, great, crazy. Yeah. I wonder what I was doing. I, that's not like me not to get up and just go to the field. I, I don't think I've ever said that must have been something crazy. I don't know, uh, but uh, I, I just remember. Uh, I don't know. Me and Jason putting two receivers in that stupid thirteen foot airplane to try to go fly the dang thing. Yep. On on my anniversary, by the way, uh, <laughs> nice. le less than a week before I deployed for Afghanistan. Wow. Yeah, I have a very loving wife. Lane, I, I just <laughs> want to say I'm a big fan of your wife. She's on the one hand, she seems like a very cool, supportive wife. On the other hand, she seems like a sort of like a badass. And uh, so I'm just a big fan. She's cool. She fits into both of those roles depending on the mood. And you know, I, I was thinking I've known her a long time. Like I have a vision of her sitting in that giant chair that I believe was cra uh, Crash's chair. Yeah. But it was like the first year he ever got it. So that had to be like eight years ago or something, you know? Um, That would have been 2014, 13. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was the first year Crash went to, uh, to uh, Seth. You remember when I uh, saw that one of my banners was in your trailer and I approached your camp, but I didn't know anyone in the camp. I, and then immediately oh, yeah. I said, I will never do anything like that again. <laughs> that uh, She was sitting in that chair and she gave me six kinds of hell. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be careful with her. You, yeah. say something, you say something wrong. She will tear you up. Uh, she's a good wife. She's a good woman. Uh, love her to death. Uh, she's actually at home right now running the laser. I just got off the phone with her uh, a minute ago and uh, she was cussing me out for something. So cheers, nice. cheers to all the RC wives out there. Yeah, no yes. doubt about that. Fifth my hat to you ladies. Hey man, uh, what are you guys did. doing? What are you guys doing on on Memorial day weekend, September 1st weekend, whatever date that is. Mm. I do not know. I will be in Florida. No, that's canceled. You're not going. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta ruin the? Why you gotta use your vacation to 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 jack up the? Uh, what do you got going, Lane? Um, Aberdeen, South Dakota, is mm. having their flying event that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, Jason, never I, mind. There's, <laughs> there's there's no way I'm going to South Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> South Dakota. I'm gonna take it all back. Jim, have you been to South Dakota? It's just not going to happen. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's 20 active members in the club. Right. <laughs> and uh, actually, they actually own the field. It's really, it, it's a nice place. Uh, I flew there last night for the first time. Cool. But uh, yeah, th that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, September. What, let me look at this calendar. First, second, and third. I'll tell you what I will do, though. Um, I would love to do a feature article about the event on Fly Giants and RC groups. If it's, I'll see what I can do. If it's giant scale relatable, we'll put it on FG. But um, people, I, every day somebody says, hey, and if I went to every event that I got invited to, I would have to quit the job and, and do that. But I love to promote events for everyone who are near it or want to go to it. Well, yeah, but the big ones, you know, like Aberdeen, South Dakota. Right, right, right. <laughs> How can you miss that? I don't understand. Um, hey, 
I want to take one moment and say hey to all our live listeners, our viewers. Uh, Wick, Big Toe 160, good name. E Powered RC, Steve Wattenberg, Ray Thompson, Scott Caraway, Two to Tango, Cy Jones Schold, uh, Steve Coggins, and many, many more. There's thousands more. I can't list all these names. Come on. But uh, actually, this is kind of a high number of live viewers. So awesome. And we do, once again, have things to show you. Oh, yeah. In fact, so, so I don't want I don't want to go straight into uh, to awesomeness, but I believe I will because it's a recipe that I'm breaking. So hold on while I slide back here, get my GB. I recognize. I, he said he said he's going to go into awesomeness. I thought it was my turn. Oh, I recognize a lot of those names you were you were rambling off there. Really? Oh yeah. Move my mic over here so you can hear me and then see this box. So this yeah. is the box. This is the size, right? And so when I opened it, I don't know what I thought. I, th I, I assume maybe I'd have to plug some wings in or something. And uh, now I'm going to open it. And so here's what's in the box. So check this out. A, this is a great way to carry the thing around because it had. I, I know that they build these boxes on purpose so you can take them around. And it has this to protect your red nose paint. And then... Look, there's nothing else in the box. And then here it is. So that is how it came out. That is so good looking. Look at it. It's got flying wires on the top and the bottom. And check this out. I was really eyeballing it. That tail wheel back there is steerable. It's mounted to the rudder. And so it's got a steerable tail wheel. There's an exit hole so your air can come in, but also go out. Very important to keep things cool in there. It's got these micro servos in that wing. And then I'll, the question is, how do I get in there? Where's the battery go? And so the nose just pops off like this. And uh, that's unplugged, yes. I'm the king daddy of leaving things plugged in and popping lipo. So there's the internals, there's the motor. It's got a, you can't see it, but the motor's a little offset to keep everything flying straight. How cute is this? So I don't cute. care what you say, man. I'm calling cute on that. Okay, yes. Have you have you flown it yet? No, so I, I will say this, uh, just as some informational podcast talk, I got out my GX9 and I went on the internet and found the SPM file, loaded it up and, um, Got everything going. Now, the SPM file had a one, two, and three switch, which I, maybe for dual rates. I never run dual rates. but um, for, Are you sure it wasn't safe select stuff? No. So I that's what I thought. This is safe select, right? I went over and over, and then I was like, hmm. So then I did what Jason always says, which is crazy. I read the manual. and <laughs> RTM, <laughs> man. RTM. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I, I pegged <laughs> the sticks in the inside corners. And then I picked, uh, there is a single switch on this for safe or safe off. Now, the AS3X is always working, of course. But uh, if you wanted to, uh, if you're a beginner or wanted to take off, I, I'm not a huge fan of safe. I always feel like I don't have control. But So um, I did my back uh, gear switch five times, and then it went kink, kink. And it was then the safe switch. And then that's it for this. There's really nothing else to it. And also, by the way, all the... Uh, and I asked them this, the designers I get to talk to occasionally, I said, every time I uh, sync up one of your planes to my uh, transmitter, it seems like I don't have to do any trimming. And they said, yes, we try to get it out of the box so that everything's trimmed perfectly so you don't have to do anything. That's lovely. It is. Super sweet. Um, the question I would have if I was watching this is how much does this cost? And I will have to go look at that page to figure that out. Some amount of money. I don't think it's much. <laughs> It's generally the case. Some, yes. But, um, I've flown now. That's that's the new version, correct? Yes. It is. Yep. Uh, I've flown the original one, and it flew great. So I can only imagine that that one will be phenomenal. But can you imagine if you could buy such a thing as a Carbon Z, like sixty size wingspan? Ah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That would be actually really impressive. So another thing I've been working on while we're on the top. Ow. Sorry. <laughs> myself in the knee in that place. Yes. Look at this, Jason. Can you see it? Billy Hale. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's, I was just got out of the shower and I said, did anything come in the mail? And my wife was like, this did. Nice. Nice. So um, what the heck was I about to talk about? 
Were you going to talk about my awesome Billy Hale starter kit right here? Nice. So you, oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, that looks more like a Bill Bullock type of deal. <laughs> I've been two yeah. months, guys. Two months. <laughs> I see work. one. I see it. It's right there. <laughs> Jason, maybe instead of me talking, why don't you uh, – what time is it? It's 2.16. We're straight into this mess. Hmm. What do you think, Jason? Should we talk some news or should we uh, talk more about the meat and potatoes about what we've been working on? Straight up, man. Let's go into the meat and potatoes. Maybe the users. we have dessert later. What's we got on? we got uh, somebody smoking butt live on the on the show here at the same time. Who's smoking butt? Uh, oh. Scott is. And the live. Mm, it is Thursday. Yeah. Thursday's a lot like Friday sometimes. It's been going seven hours so far. I'm like, we need to go over to his house to do the rest of the show. Mm, I bet yeah. it's Tinder. I, I can leave work for that. <laughs> Calling in the a sick day. The hurt people will understand. Seriously. <laughs> Well, for the uh, drone racer guys out there, this is the hot, sexy Shimitar 215 Pro from Blade. And it just looks great. I love the black and the teal. Um, these props are awesome. So this is basically, it's a bind and fly. It's a hardcore, like, racing freestyle drone for the guy who doesn't want to build. So you get it out of the box, bind and fly it's ready to rock you throw the props on put your battery in it and it's ready to go comes with the cp antenna i have a question awesome camera what is your question jim Grant? does your fpv uh dome antenna there does it say r on it yeah for right hand polarization oh <laughs> yeah yes that's what i was thinking right on you want to have a question your receiver antenna i got a question too what's your question man how, how, how much of a hit will that thing take? So that's a great question. And it will, it's, this says it's a, uh, what do they call it? Resilient. Carbon fiber. It's not carbon, it's plastic, but it's, it's carbon fiber, like look, it's shiny. Oh. Um, but they call it a resilient plastic protective cover and it's got led lights on the back, which they all flicker and stuff as you increase the throttle. It's pretty cool. Um, now I have flown this and it is bad ass. It is super fast, super powerful. It's 2206 motors, uh, four cell, you know, high voltage, 1300 milliamp hour pack. Now I have flown it. I have crashed it and I have cracked the body. Whoa. You probably can't see it. Um, and it's oh. bad, but there's, there's a crack on either side of the camera. I, I took a picture and I'll kind of show this in the review just to be aware of. It's only barely aesthetic. You you can barely see it that it's cracked, but it's fully functional and still protecting all of your electronics. So but I took not, some. It's not proof. Jason. It's not. It's not Jason proof. I can't break it. You can break anything. The props are going to break. I surprisingly didn't break a prop. I don't know if you can see my feed. Probably is low resolution. But there's one little ding in the prop right here. And after uh, several crashes, I was flying around trying to get good DVR footage, getting low. I ran into the ground one time and, you know, it cartwheeled for a mile. I hit a tree with it, um, you know, fell down straight to the ground. Have not even broken one of these props yet, but I did crack that body. It's a pretty good hits. So, you know, you can crack it, but it's going to take it and... This really is, you can race with this and be really competitive. You can go do your freestyle stuff. It's got, you know, a tiltable camera mount. You've got access to it. It is a, I believe it's a beta flight. So if you want to, if you want to go in and uh, change anything uh, parameter wise in the flight board, you can do that. It has an F3 I, flight controller. I think it is spot on tuned out of the box that, and you know, they've got pro level guys working on these things to get these, you know, properly tuned. So it flies awesome. Runs on a 4S power system, has D-Shot ESCs. It says it's carbon fiber mainframe. Uh, the, the, frame, a, the bottom frame is carbon fiber. Four millimeter arms. But their protective cover is not. It's plastic. And uh, it's this, a 4S 1300 there. Uh, 1300, yeah. Now they sent me high voltage packs. And I usually never charge the IHV packs all the way up to full. I usually charge them like a normal lipo to save them, but I may actually try. I can't imagine how much more power it's going to have because it's pretty ballistic already on a regular lipo charge. 
The other cool right. feature is that video transmitter does 25 or 200 milliwatts, so you can turn it down if you're in a pack. Yeah, and you don't have to get to the body to do anything. There's, it's hard to show. Uh, it's really reflective right there. So these are two buttons underneath the canopy, and you can actually press them without having to take the canopy off. So you can change the power setting on the transmitter. You can change uh, channel and band and all that stuff very easily. So, so far, I'm really, really liking it. I'll, I do kind of want to, before I finish the review, get out to one of our local clubs, uh, race events, and put it in some hands. We've got a pro-level pilot locally. I don't know if you know that, Jim. Uh, Nub um, is a local pilot that flies in the DRL. Um, hardcore, amazing. Like I watched him go from not knowing how to fly to being professional level racer. Um, but they're all up at, in uh, Muncie right now at the IO uh, big competition going on this weekend. So hope they're having fun doing that. To make also, sorry, there's a big jet uh, event coming up right now in uh, at Horizons at yeah. So anyway, 215 Pro. It's three hundred and twenty-nine dollars, I believe. Bind that and fly, correct. But it's basically ready to go. Just go out and race and play. So good looking, good flying. Sexy beast there. Well, if we're going there, then we might as well go here. And so this might be more for you, Lane, because of a couple of things. Now, I've owned a lot of quads. I've owned some badass mofo quads, man. Um, and there's always things that get you. Um, I've had I've had high end like uh, aerial platforms that I couldn't get to ever even start because you couldn't get your uh, throttle in the right place. I mean, I've answered lots of questions. So there's a lot of variables and just getting things going. And the beautiful part about this guy is that it came with this DXE transmitter and every, it was already bound. All the settings were built in. And then like uh, when I plug in this quad, I can flip my switch right here and uh, get the motors going. And it was all straight out of the box. I'm not kidding you. All I did was put the props on and put the prop guards on. And then I walked in the backyard, stood back so it didn't fly into my face, which we have done before. I've flown new quad straight into my face. And uh, it it was super stable, and I'm flying under trees that obviously needed uh, to be trimmed. And it, I flew all around the backyard over the thing. And, Jason, there's no pool in my yard to fly into now. So i got to tell <laughs> you, that if, yeah, I felt a lot safer. I have flown quads in the pool, too, by the way, <laughs> straight in. And it didn't affect them. They literally, I let them dry out overnight and flew them the next day. So uh, this guy is not as affordable. Jason's quad, like he said, was three twenty nine. Bind and fly though. Yours is ready to fly. Yeah, and so I'm gonna click over to my page here. Mine, well, mine's two ninety nine out the door. It has this camera. It also has the two twenty five and two hundred milliwatt. Let me tell you, two hundred is all you would ever need for a thing like this. I think. And it comes with two batteries. That was the thing. The unit that I got. Uh, and this will be in the review, a picture of this. It came with the quad, two batteries, a charger if you don't have one, a transmitter, and I don't think I brought it in here. It came with a screen, and you also get a headset that goes with the screen. Now, you have to make sure your eyes work with that headset. But um, And by the way, Jason, the screen, and I'll go get it, I might as well, has a DVR built into it. Yeah, buddy. I didn't expect That's that. Good. That's like, um, yeah. Looking at, the, looking at the bottom of that thing. What I'm noticing and what I'm liking is the arms are replaceable. Yes. So, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of these ones that you keep seeing are a solid formed part and you can't replace the part. So when you do damage it, you have to basically buy a whole new frame. Yeah. That one appears like you can buy pieces it's and parts. Yep. We have the same drone on the bottom. I mean, it's like the same thing. Yours is maybe bigger and has the prop guards and maybe a, a, a smaller power system. It does look okay. Nice. What battery are you using? Uh, just going by mind, it's a four cell 1800, I think. 1800. So, yeah, so yours is just a little bit bigger, um, but it's basically this a similar design. That's the story guard. of your life, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Lane, I've heard people poo poo prop guards, they're like, uh, but they're they can all go fly without prop guards and go buy new props and then That's have right. to stop flying because I've had these things save my life over and over again as far as actually continue flying goes. Yeah. You can so, hit something and be okay. Yeah, like a branch or a tree or, or not a tree, but um, so maybe yes. a fellow pilot. 
<laughs> yeah, or yourself. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I am looking at the page here, and like, uh, there's another plane that I have on the bench. I probably will save it for next week because I don't feel I'm far enough along to to talk on it. But right here, center frame for the Scimitar. Wait, is this yours or mine? This is for mine. Um, fourteen dollars, and arm set nineteen dollars. So not only do they have replacements, but they're affordable. That's excellent. So they're asking, uh, Lee's asking Jim, what's the view like in the goggles with the uh, prop guards? Are they in the way? Is mm. it a problem? Well, I have to say that, uh, so yesterday I wasn't like racing or anything. That's not, it wasn't like that yesterday. It was more like that yesterday. And I don't remember seeing the prop guards, prop guards at all. Really? That's, I'm sure that they have to be there. Maybe they were there and my mind was just not worrying about it, but whatever. I had mine tilted up about midway and I can see my props, you know, flying. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, if you, if we later in the broadcast, of, well, it sounds dangerous, but if you guys have something to talk about, I can go get a set of goggles and we could go look at the view. I can hold it up to the camera and you can take a look at it. Gosh, I don't know. Me and Jason fill in time by talking about stuff. All right, y'all do that, and then I'll. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Can Can you see that as being? That sounds difficult. I don't think we know how to talk that well. God no. Well, okay. So apparently, you guys are not coming to South Dakota. Then fine. I no, see. No, sorry. I'll be at Harry Potter World. Right, what What and, is? And that? I'm, I'm trying to visit Graves RC too while I'm down there. Ah, nice. Um, there's another uh, Heads Up RC is down there in Florida. Are they in Orlando? I don't, I'd have to look at the address, but have, have you ever ordered from Heads Up? Heads Up? I don't think I have, actually. Phenomenal company. I don't care what you buy. It's two bucks to ship it. And nice. I swear to God, he ships things the same day. Uh, it shows up like two minutes after you order. It's great. So That's anyway, awesome. just, a, just a little, you know, shout out to Heads Up RC. I never met the guy, but they've taken very good care of me. Um, yeah, but it's anyway. always good to give props to those people that are, you know, taking care of us. Right. Um, so this local field here, though, I started talking about, it's a pretty nice field, uh, grass runway and all, but, uh, and I was flying, uh, the, have you seen the Phoenix models dolphin? It's kind of a four star clone. Okay. Um, I was yeah, flying okay. that, uh, really nice airplane. Phoenix models make some decent stuff, but that airplane's a little bit lo less expensive than a four star flies about the same. Yeah. And then I had a CUDA out there, my night flyer CUDA until the mosquitoes tried to carry me away. Did you have some major ones? Yeah, they're about about that big. <laughs> the mosquitoes come in and they, you know, it's kind of like something you'd see on a movie. My uh, my mom's husband posted a Facebook thing the other day about getting jumped outside of his house. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what the heck happened? And he went through this whole thing about how they attacked him and did all stuff. And then it was like mosquitoes. Right. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so anyway, anybody who's listening or watches this, if you get time uh, the weekend of September 1st, again, whatever that is, I think it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday also, because Monday, I believe, is the actual holiday. More They're going to have their event up here in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and it is a nice little town. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Cool. And uh, will I be here? Uh, don't know yet. <laughs> I cannot say for certain. Schedule depending, right? That's right. Um, but uh, anyway. And then Ice House uh, is coming up down in Texas. Uh, that's going to be a great event too. I wish we could make it to that, but yeah. we will actually we'll actually be on a cruise. I'll be in in the Caribbean. Sweet. Uh, yeah. But uh, going to bring in airplanes? Uh, they probably wouldn't like that on a cruise ship. <laughs> we can get there. You can make it happen. I could try anything once. <laughs> so it's plugged in, and there's your LED lights on the back. Yeah, well, that's bright. All right, so yes, yes, you are correct. Let's see if we can do this. Hold it closer. Uh, the the yeah. Well, let me look at. Hold on, I've got two hands. Stop talking so you can. It's probably an angly thing. Oh, there you go. Check, yeah. check, 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 check. So yes, the prop guards are definitely. Just barely, there. though. Check, check, it's check. It's at the very bottom, though, so it's not that's not check, that. Check, easy. check, Yeah. And then I can slant it all the way up in race mode. And that makes the video faster. Check, okay. check, check. You know what I found, Jim, for me, personally? Check, check. Is having the props or, like, those guards in the view has actually helped yes. my ability to fly through gaps. 
Um, also, based on our knowledge of VR goggles, it probably keeps you from getting motion sick. Too. It could, yeah. Like, for instance, the very first flight with this one, I went out and I was going around some trees, and there was a grouping that were pretty tight, you know, together. And normally on my flights in the past, I would, you know, just skip that gap, go around it through a bigger gap. And I just, something about it felt so good and locked in that I was heading in that direction. I saw it and I was like, I got this. And I went right through it and had no problems. And I was like, man, that's impressive. I'm going to be talking about that in the review. It just felt locked into what I wanted it to do. And then with seeing those somehow helped my ability to guide it where I wanted it to go. Like almost uh, having sights on a gun or something. Yeah, it was great. The FPV that I've flown, uh, you you need some something there, some static part. It yeah. helps. It it helps you with even uh, depth perception for uh, altitude. Yeah. When, you, when you're coming down near the ground. Yep. Having having being able to see that prop or something else. But now that's just me. Can I tell you what I don't like about drones versus airplanes in FPV? Yes. So, you know, this is level on the drone, right? But the camera is pointing way up high. So when you're traveling, you know, straight, the drone is tilted at whatever angle it needs to be. And so when you do a roll, you're rolling like this. It's not a symmetrical axial roll in the in the camera view, right? So it can make the it makes it look like a barrel roll almost in your video feed if you're you know even with the horizon tilted with the drone and try to do a roll and the loops are okay because it's all you know in line with the way the feed is looking but the 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 thing is all jacked up in roll and in yaw so when you're wanting the yaw it should you know the camera would need to go like this but yaw is doing this side to side thing so that it takes a, a it's just i don't know it's weird for me like trying to do freestyle stuff and go up high when i i'm used to flying airplanes and i know you know what the expected movement would look like in the fpv camera and it looks nothing like it in one of these drones so it's it's a challenge to try to figure it out so i mean i think i don't know i don't know how else to say it maybe there's mixing i don't know what people do if there's ways to mix in your radio around that and make it do what it would normally do in an airplane through the FPV camera. Does that make sense? Yes. I don't think you'd be able to do anything about it uh, because you're because you have to have that different in angle between the frame of the quad and the and the sight. And, and yeah. unless you had some kind of crazy thing where when you went to roll it, somehow your camera came down level. Right. Uh, yeah. but, now I can't believe there isn't an auto leveling cam that when you're straight, it's here, and then when you kick it up, it. It would well, just that's take a not, it's not good for flying because you're 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 right. the fixed position. You're locked into the drone. Yeah. yeah. And if it, if the camera's moving, then in, yeah. without a visual reference, and maybe you would see the props move a little bit or something. Right. But yeah. you you need to be able to know where the positioning of the copter is to be able to fly it properly. Well, uh, airplanes FPV like eight, flying my wings FPV. I really like doing that. Uh, it's tricky, and I'm not very good at it, but uh, it is fun. It's the most fun. Before we get too far away, I wanted to show the screen. This actually comes with that setup that I showed you. So this has a, a SD slot and a micro SD slot, switches on top, and I guess that's audio out. And then check it out, Lane. Um, this can My mount on a idea. this can mount on a tripod, but it also mounts in this goggle uh -huh. set. And then you lock it. Now this lock to me has always seemed a little light, but you lock it in, and then you put it on your head, and you can uh, FPV it this way. So this is another option out there. That's that's actually pretty slick, and that thing's two ninety nine. Comes with everything. Boy, it seems like a lot, but I, I'm gonna. No, it doesn't seem like a lot. <laughs> that's actually I mean, reasonable. I mean, uh, that seems like a lot of stuff. Self for two hundred, yeah. yeah, for three, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's it's like a it's. I mean, they're trying to help people get started. You know, make it easy, give them everything they need. It's kind of like a heroin addiction. You give the first one for free. That's right. There you go. And maybe that doesn't quite compare. <laughs> these this is the uh, Scimitar one seventy and Jason's is Scimitar two fifteen. If you want to go check those out. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're standing on the side of the road with a sign. We'll work for RC. 
<laughs> yeah, and you got a beard like mine and mine and uh, gems, and <laughs> you're in the classified section, right? Wearing dirty old pants. Uh, Steve Wattenberg, uh, or not Steve, but uh, Lee Marshall asked when in Aberdeen uh, the first weekend there. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, they're having a flying event in Aberdeen. Mm. Um, if anybody wants any more information on that, hit me up either on Facebook or just shoot me an email at lanesplanes at gmail, and uh, I'll get you some information on that. And, and Lee, Jim, we also had a request for a bullhorn update. Oh, well, I've got one. But Lee says how how the, I would assume how this compares to a set of fat sharks. It's a whole different animal, if you ask me. Um, if you have eyes like mine, where they aren't right. Uh, fat sharks might work better. I'm pretty sure I can't use this. I can find out real fast. But um, this would be a great way to start. And then, like another way, you don't have to wear these goggles. There's a mount on here, so you can put it on a tripod and put it in front of you. I have flown that way. Jason was there. Uh, the only problem I had with that is that my mind saw the airplane flying through the air, and my mind saw the airplane in the uh, screen, and my mind didn't know what to do. I literally couldn't figure out how to fly it. Now, after the first time that happened, I could do it from then on. But the first time I said, uh, I can't do this, Jason, here. And I handed him the controller. You remember that? At, uh, I do, yeah. At <laughs> My brain was splitting oh. off. That's a Talk to you later. Oh, wow. Later, man. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Get on it. it. Just like that, he's saving somebody's life. He is an American badass. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to go get the steer horns, which are basically done. I only have one thing left to do, and we'll talk about it. Ah, so, Jim, uh, we did have an update here. The, the the 170 FPV ready to fly like you have is 499 Yeah, I was thinking um, – I was looking at the feature set here, 299 and the 299 has the quad. Um, it's the non-FPV version, I believe. No, it doesn't come with the screen and all that stuff. Yeah, but the 299 comes with the FPV cam and the adjustable yeah. video transmitter, but all that other stuff it does not have. So, yeah. One sec. One sec. Hey, guys, it's just me right now. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing swell. I was flying some, uh, uh, what's it called, Ultra Wings in VR the other day. It's pretty fun. I do need to get back and try Jim's uh, full-scale flight aerobatic simulator. I still haven't tried it since uh, the first day when it didn't work for me. So I need to go try to figure out what was going on with my computer and see if I can get that to run. Because I'd really like to get in there and try that, especially in VR. That's been such a blast. And what else is going on? Getting ready for the Bruce the DLG competition coming up in less than a month now. We'll go up to Bruce's place in Louisville, Kentucky. Go fly some gliders for a weekend. That's going to be awesome fun. Check. There's one, two. Horns. Check. One, two. Okay. So I'll put them back behind me. Man, that looks freaking amazing. Yeah, it looks like the real deal. So basically what I did the last time you saw these, I had the horns connected to some rubber connectors. You can see them here. And then a two inch pipe connecting those. And then I took a two and a half inch pipe and went over the top. So then on a Saturday, I'm not sure what I got into me. Maybe the podcast made me do it. I sat down and went through old scraps of leather and I found this guy and I was like, how am I going to get it on there? Basically I wrapped it on and I was going to tuck it in the sides and I thought that didn't look right. So, um, I just screwed this piece of leather in and trimmed it around the edges. I haven't decided if the edge just, what do you think, Jason? Do I need well, to do your something? other one? Look like the leather went off of whatever yeah. the sleeve was and onto the horn. It and did. Kind of was shrunk like he yeah. shrunk. Almost. So what do you what are you planning to do to to fix that? I don't know. I'm either going to leave it like this or think about it. My other idea is to cut a piece of leather that would be like a circle, and then it would slide on the horn, and then it would just cover up. Right? I think you need to cover it up. I mean, that's just me. It's okay. like you're, you're ninety percent there. Just let's get that extra ten percent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> And so the other thing I did was I cut the reason there's a seam between the two pieces of wood is that the Cadillac has a piece of chrome that runs down the middle of the hood. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a way for that to sit on top and then sit on the hood itself. And this actually did work. These are 65 pound magnets that uh, they had eye hooks. So I took the screw out of the eye hook and then just screwed them into the wood. I was going to set them in the wood, but I thought, man, maybe I'm making this too hard. And, uh, it is, I 
you could drive through a parade or down the street with this. I don't know how it would do on the highway. So I did, I do have some other magnets that would go all the way across the front and back. Mm -hmm. And then I also have sitting back here, just a, uh, it's a bar that would come out and then it would go out and then hook under the front of the hood. And that way it could never blow back. If it started blowing back, it would just hook on the hood and stay yeah. on. Yeah. Um, I didn't get that far. I got this far and was very pleased. I went and mounted this on my daughter's car and took a picture and then I mounted it on my wife's <laughs> uh, hybrid car and took a picture of that. So oh, that's cool. That's where we're at. I guess if I wanted to, I could do that wrap thing here, but I, I looked at it all different ways. I cut this long with that in mind, but none of them looked right to me. Yeah. Or at, I, least, yeah. at least paint the PVC. So it's not white. Yep. 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 Maybe. I don't know. Well, my best idea was that I, I somehow cut a piece of leather that then covered all this up very cleanly, like, like that, you know? And, yeah. But hmm. it's cool. I wonder if you could 3d print something that would slide on. Hmm. Very interesting. I could print it like a tapered down sleeve or something. I have the brown wood uh, 3D filament that would work, you know. Mm -hmm. Still, that's a freaking awesome work, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and hey, I could I could probably go to Home Depot and find something that would work here and walk out the door with a solution, you know. Yep. So it's currently, we have a big sign over the liquor cabinet upstairs and I just walked by and stuck it to the sign. So now there's horns over our liquor cabinet. Nick says brown stick wrap tape. All right. I'm right. not sure what that is. I'm going to, I'll Google it for future searching. Beat shrink or caulk. Yeah, you could probably caulk it. Heck yeah. And that's why we're here. Brown stick. I've got some like, yeah, some dark colored brown, oh, yeah, looking, yeah. like caulk sealant stuff for the grout in the bathroom. Interesting. And then, well, if I use sealant, well, I don't know. I'd have to figure it out. I'm always trying to do something that I can undo in case it doesn't work. This tape does look very leathery. Oh, he's talking about like something you'd like wrap like a tennis racket with. Oh. Well, I have... You can't see them in my camera, but I have steer horns right above me. So I literally was walking in here looking at my, I don't know how old these are, but somebody handmade them, um, trying to make sure that I was staying close to it. Holy cow. Did you hear that? What's that? Brian says, I have a set of real five and a half feet long Texas Longhorns with center scalp Wait, you can have. I can have. I, I, I totally didn't read that part. <laughs> Heck yeah. You know, man, when I was in high school and college, people would just go, Hey Jim, I was I grew up in Texas, so this doesn't happen very much in Tennessee. But they would bring me cow skulls. I never said no, and I always thought, ah, oh, I got another cow skull. But then the other day, when I was doing these horns, I thought, where's all my cow skulls? What <laughs> I, I must have had six of them. Are and they then, in boxes somewhere in the sun? No, they're gone. They're just <laughs> gone. It's like I used to have uh, the first holster I ever bought. I bought. I got a job, and the, I thought, what am I going to buy with this first check? And I thought, I'm going to buy a leather gun belt, and I did. And it was at my house in Texas and like guitars and a lot of other, and, I, and the gun that went in that holster, they all just magically got put somewhere and never, you know. Wow. Yep. To yeah. use funnels and wrap them. Mm, you know, that's not a bad idea. When you get leather wet, it'll do just about anything you want. So that's interesting. And I have a bunch of funnels in the back. So Jason, I uh, will talk about it and then we'll go look at it next week. I got the Optera 1.2. Yes, I can't wait to try that out. Now I got the BNF Basic, and I do have a call coming in from somebody at Horizon, whoever built it, and we weren't sure. It's it's uh, either I'm either going to talk to Jason Merkel or um, Matt Andron. And so one thing I wanted was an SPM file because I wanted to make sure that was in. I wanted a real. Uh, H or horizon backed SPM file for the review for all of you guys. So you have it if you need it. And um, I know that one of these versions has return to home and loiter. They don't call it that they have different names. Yeah. But I'm starting to think I don't have that version. I think my, although mine just does have a GPS puck in it. 
So that's why I'm making the phone call. Yeah, if it has a GPS, I can't imagine it not utilizing that. Well, I don't understand because the 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 very the best one they have comes with a camera, 25 200 milliwatt video transmitter, return yeah. to home looter, all that stuff. Mine doesn't have a camera or video transmitter, and when I looked up the basic BNF version, it didn't say that it did those things. Did you read? Did you RTM? I did. After this morning, I told my wife. Jason said I should read the manual, and then I laughed. And in fact, check it out. I got it right here. I was reading it this morning. So, I I thought, okay, I should read this before I make somebody call me. But even then, I wasn't clear on what I have or what I have not. So uh, we'll find out. I will say this: this thing built so easy um they took the big optera which was a i believe it was uh, wings were cut in two pieces and then the uh, main fuse this is just two wing pieces and a fuse it all pops together you put just pull it apart manually there's nothing to to screw on or off uh they lengthen the motor mount so it's super uh, solid and it looks like it's going to be hopefully a killer airplane it run on three and four s2 so it'll have power nice so what i mean could that thing you're looking at maybe not be a GPS? I guess we can look at it. I mean, it's a podcast, and maybe if we're lucky, we won't have flown it by our next podcast. And then instead of talking about the bird, we can talk about flying it. So I'm going to go get it. Yeah, there's yeah, life is be, short. Could be just telemetry. Could be used for that. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the features on that Joker. And it definitely is not in the specs. That is interesting. I wonder what that would be. I have no idea what he's looking at. They don't have any detailed shots of what's inside on the website. What you got, man? What you got? All right. Well, I'm giving you everything now. I hope we have something to talk about next week. <laughs> so here's the battery. What we got here? By the way, the battery on that quad, I said it was an 18. It was a 1,000. I was wrong. It does have altitude hold. So I wonder if maybe it's... Something to do with that. So just a few things I did. The stock one has a nose with weights in it, or there is one that you can put a camera in. So I actually had a camera and a video transmitter out of another Horizon plane, and I was just trying to stay Horizon specific. And check this out. It actually makes me a little nervous how easy everything comes off, but I've never had an issue. So um, that thing slid in there perfectly. Awesome. And it's in there very tight. And so you just tuck your wires in. It has a flat top and a, and a little tip here. That's how you can tell which is which. Now, this is actually, of course, for uh, a GoPro or run cam or something like that. But I didn't see anywhere else to mount my video transmitter. And I thought, well, this is as good as anywhere else, if you ask me. Unless I crash and break my favorite antenna. I didn't think of that. I may slide this thing back in. There's a, there's a gap back here where it could slide back in and I could get it more off the nose and then these guys pop in and out too um i was thinking they popped in and out too easy for me but then i was watching the video this morning and theirs popped in and out just as easy so maybe they don't fly off okay here you go jimmy t yeah the video transmitter installed in the bnf fpv version includes an integrated on-screen display system the osd takes advantage of the gps data available to the aircraft to deliver useful information on the video display. So you'll get um, speed, altitude, um, distance to home, from home, whatever direction. You get direction and distance to home. Yeah. So you you have all that stuff built in. And no. It's going to display for you on the OSD when you power it all up. No, not on this. Yeah. I don't have a video transmitter on here. Uh, the video transmitter installed in the BNF. Oh, you have to have the FPV version. Yes. So I obviously so, don't have that. Yeah, you would have to have a transmitter that could accept that port. Because if that if that GPS is still there, yeah, you don't have it. You'd have to have their the SPM VT one thousand video transmitter. Now it does make things easier for me because all I have to do now is go fly it. Yeah. But. It, so here's the reason I was questioning. Can you see it? That is there. I mean, that yeah, is a GPS. Yes, yep. 
And so what the heck is it on my machine for if my machine can't do it? You would, uh, yeah, you would have to buy, I mean, basically you, they sent you a version that doesn't have the FPV stuff. So you would need to use their FPV stuff to take full advantage. And when I RTM'd, um, it did show how you could upgrade this by buying those pieces. Yeah. Nice receiver, by the way. That is a not a, a minimal, that's a maximum channel receiver. And then it also has a satellite right here. Yep. And um, the ESC is floating so that connect can connect to my battery. And then um, they said they redesigned this. I hate to go over everything, but I guess we're already here. Um, they redesigned everything on this to make so it has bigger elevons. So the roll rate is not like the big Optera, which was like yeah, it's three little, days. Little peppy. Yeah. And um, well, oh, they did my favorite thing. You know, Jason. PG Marks. I wonder if they if somebody listens to me or if <laughs> I I hope for things and then they ha happen. You know. Yeah. I was watching their video and they say they were saying stuff that I say. So I, I don't know if they listen, to, watch our reviews and they're like, oh, that's a good idea. I was like, are we influencing designs of airplanes? That would be awesome to think that we were, but I, I can't think big enough to think that that's true, you know? Yeah. I mean, Multiplex has been doing that forever. Well, they, they did it awesome on here. I'm glad it's there. It's definitely helpful. You can put your finger right in the little between the two dots and the CG is there. Um, and then of course it has, uh, I forget what are these called to keep the, the air stuck to the, the wing. Turbulators. Turbulators, right. I was w w watching a video about that on race cars and why they have them on the roof. So when the wind comes up off the hood, it sticks so it can go back through the rear air down and keep the butt down. Otherwise it disperses wildly. I said, he said, you should say copyright after every statement about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it would be cool. I do know some things that we've talked about became real because of it. Um, I haven't flown this one yet, Brian. Brian asked if you had to buy one, which would it be? Um, I that can tell easy. you, I flew the crap out of the big one, and I flew it in winds that no sane person would ever put an RC airplane in the air. And we had six of them in there dogfighting um, up in Illinois. And if you're flying in wind, if you live in South Dakota or whatever, then you should get the big Optera. And like, I haven't flown this, so I can't say this yet, but I got a feeling this is more suited for what we do down here. Yeah. I mean, the size, the size of the big Optera makes me not want it, even though I think it's cool. But this is, this is going to handle well. It's going to be longevity uh, for long flights. It's going to be peppy if you want it to be. It's going to cruise if you want it to cruise. In the goggles, you can't tell whether you're in the big one or the little one. It's right, not yes. That much of a difference. So this one's just going to fit in your car easier. It has weight to it, so it's got a big access bay here. It, you don't need to go buy an Eagle Tree system, but if you had one and you wanted to drop it in, you sh I think you've got all the room in the world to yeah. do so. Yeah. I'm wondering where they would put that video transmitter unless the the antenna just lives in the body, you know? It was in the manual. Ba -da -ba -ba. Let me find it. And then another cool thing that they've added to this one that's not on the big one is this big skid here. It's all plastic, and it's got a place for your finger to throw it. And it also, uh, they're sitting on the workbench, but it came with skids, which I've always put on stuff. Yeah, well, I couldn't figure out exactly where they would go, but they're for landing on asphalt so you don't grind your wingtips. Yeah. Down. Now, for me, I, th I think I was talking about you earlier about this but i would not be launching it at least not with the power on yes no um and i'd probably do an overhead power on launch i prefer powered launches so i would do the hold it from the nose and do the sidearm over my head thing it, it works on every wing i've ever tried it on it's super reliable it's nice that i'm a lefty because i have my right hand on the stick you know you do the whole mouth to the throttle thing but it's just it's it works for me. So that's how I would be launching that one personally. Man, I was looking at video. Uh, I have a lot of really nice video transmitters and I could not find the right wiring harness. Evidently I've put everything on everything I own. And so I had multiple video transmitters and no harnesses. I'm going to have to go through all my wiring to find it. And uh, I, I pulled this out of the theory type W thinking that I was going to put something better in there. 
And I have to say, after I pulled it out and put in uh, what I thought was a better system, it wasn't better. It didn't feel better in the goggles. Really? Yeah. Then, I, then I felt stupid because I'd spent all that time pulling it out and putting a new one in. <laughs> and I was like, man, next time I'm just going to leave it alone. There you go. Um, this does need to be heavier, though. I'm pretty sure my CG is going to want me to put something somewhere. If I can get the battery. Well, you don't have a battery in it. Yeah, no, I, I put a battery in and tried to CG it. And it wasn't, it was just a little bit to the rear. So I'm going to see if I can get the battery slid more forward in here. I have a go. wire though, and maybe that's what's stopping it. So that's it. It's pretty dang cool. And then we have, the reason we're not talking is we're looking at live people, same thing. <laughs> Never add weight, bigger battery. Yes. Or if not a bigger battery, I, I might be able to to make a little bit of a bigger hole down here for this battery. What slide. size is that one? This is a 3000, but I have to say, I'm pretty sure this is not what they sent for this. And I have the other one on the charger. And so um, I was reluctant to say what they sent without going and having it in my hand. Also, this, by the way, if you don't own this, this JST pigtail coming off the balancing tab, I own three of these. I use them for everything, and they're, you have to have it. Like, if I go to the field with Jason, I may not have a wrench or uh, pliers, yeah. but I always have this JST pigtail. I'm going to go back and look at the what battery this thing So he says, never add weight, add bigger battery. That's yes. always good if you can do it. Now well, they, they had yeah. weight in the original nose. If anybody knows if this product exists, I would love to find it. Like I was at that cell plane contest and my plane was older and heavier than everybody else's. And we had a, like a light wind, no lift kind of section. So I was at a disadvantage. So I was trying to find something where I could add lightness to the bottle to make it lighter. <laughs> and I, I couldn't find it. Like I've been Google searching. I couldn't find how to add lightness um, to my planes. It's really frustrating, but Somebody did suggest a uh, drill, um, but I didn't see how that was going to work. It might make it uh, less structurally sound, but helium, helium, helium. Yeah, helium would work. I, you know, that's a great question. I don't know if our wings have enough inside volume, like area, to be able to fill it up to actually make any sort of difference. I'm sure somebody's done the math on that. That would be funny to have an entire airplane. I bet you could do it for F5J planes because they don't need, um, they don't need to take the the strength of a winch launch. They just power up with electric. So you could be super light. It's probably there's probably a rule against that though. What do you got? I got a 30C, 3200 milliamp. 3200. All right. Four S. That is a big battery. Oh ha. Nick said LEDs, of course, to add light. Oh, by the way, I got it, Nick, just so you know. Hey, man, um, I forgot about this, and I remember being excited about it. This is how you detach the wing, by the way. You muscle it. You just pull it off. Now, what they said was, and oh, I forgot until this morning, they said that they created inlets in these wings so you could slide LEDs in. And I don't see them. I'm going to have to... I see a slot here. I don't know if that's what that is or not, but um, my guess is that there's channels in these wings and you just take your LED strip and you slide it in. And if that is the case, then I'm definitely doing it to this airplane. <laughs> yeah. I got to say horizons bind them are like their foam airplanes uh, have been just getting so much better in terms of ease of use taking them apart, putting them together at the field. Like the Cessna 150 is a joy to put together. It's you used to you hate big airplanes where you had to put wings on and use five screws and get to a hard to reach place to get to them and install and hook up the uh, struts and pins and all this stuff. So it's so much easier than it used to be. And I know everyone knows how much I love my, I loved my carbon Z cub, but um, it was just such a, activity to get every make make sure you brought everything with you and then put it together and take it apart you know this yep. battery is gigantic man and you really don't even need to take the wings off of this one what about the yeah. wingtips are the wingtips molded in or are they separate pieces no, they're molded in okay and they may made a point to say that they did that on purpose so that you gotcha. didn't it wasn't another step 
So it would be two wings in the center, and then you can pop these guys out. And that probably would fit in a suitcase if you're inclined. There you go. I cannot get this battery to go past the what would be the firewall here. We got an update on Scott's butt. It's uh, now at 198 degrees. Uh, two more yeah. to go, and we're ready to eat. You got a hot butt, Scott. Now, <laughs> this battery with that CG, I don't have the, the hood on here, but it's nose heavy now, so maybe uh, – there you Boy, go. That, that seems like a big old battery. Is that right? I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, dude. It's a long. I mean, you're gonna be able to fly for a long time. Yeah. Just cruising around, man. It's gonna be fun. All right. Well, there's this, is, this is. If I like had to go, like Jason, you got to buy an FPV plane right now. It would be that airplane. Well, you'll get to. Uh, hold on. I'm trying not to break it. I guess you'll get to find out pretty soon. We almost went flying today, y'all, but um, I'm glad we didn't, Jason. I went outside. It was already stormy and wet. Yeah, yeah, we did. It. We made a good call. I think even tomorrow might not be so great. We might be next week in it. But Well, I did that thing. I've already complained about this, Jason, where you, you get a lot of stuff, and there's a lot to do on the website, and then, but you know that you've got these reviews to do, and the last thing you want to do is have that hanging over your head. And so I spent most of the day yesterday getting everything ready and charged and uh transmitted up and i was prepared to say to jason if jason said let's go to the field my goal was to have as many things as i could ready to get there but i have taken jason to the field and handed him the controls of an airplane and had a prop flying to the air off the the motor i've had uh wheel stick i've had all kinds of crazy things happen yep. who just walked by my door it looked like a man Truman, is that you? It's Maeve. Oh, it's Maeve. Okay. Right. Maeve, sh come here. Everyone, this is my daughter, Maeve. Show everyone your skateboard. Maeve. Maeve, are you going to the skate park? No. I'm You're going inside? Yes. I was just skating. It's your Metallica shirt. All right. She's a skater chick. Okay, lean down just a little so they can see your head. Pulling tricks. Rock and roll. Oops, right. I missed it. I made that go on the my face sorry thank you ma'am <laughs> all right uh live viewers anything you need to talk about what time we're we at holy cow we're over an hour uh, awesome there you go we're getting rain until monday or tuesday oh it says jason uh now you know what i also hate it's one thing to have bad weather i i hate having a dark sky in a review it always feels like it didn't that's not how it should be. It should be a blue sky with, and you want some clouds. Uh, either you or my kinds taught me that you want clouds yeah. to give it a little, uh, so it doesn't feel so uh, like an empty space up there. Yeah. It's a floating airplane. And I always call them Simpsons, Simpsons clouds, you know, at the Simpsons intro where the clouds go, the Simpsons. Yeah. That, uh, that's what I'm always looking for. Simpsons. Clouds. Yeah. Especially videos just suck. If you don't fly low when it's just no clouds. It looks like the plane is just hovering. If you're if you're a really good videographer, in space, just by its, it just looks bad. Sometimes I zoom out so you can see trees, just to kind of get a feeling for how fast or how low or how slow or something's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about Max landing real quick? Yeah, gotta... let me go. Uh, I don't think there's a. Mm, you know what I do have is that I have a link to the story at the paper, and I did call the paper. And talked to the guy who wrote the story, and he gave me the permission to uh, write about this. Nice. I didn't use any images out of trying to do everything legally here. But you know what? I'm pretty sure we could go to uh, the paper story and take a look because they do have some photographs. So this is a real photo. I didn't take this. I think Clint took this photo from Castle, Jason. Uh-huh. My question is, is he on the ground? He, it looks to me, if you look right here, you can see a little bit of a tree. Uh, it's too horizontal. I mean, he's right. definitely flying. He's he's either taking off or flying because the you know the tail is off the ground at that point. Right. right. Well, that's a crazy shot. How did he get an eye level shot of Mac flying by? He was probably either taking off or doing well. He'd be rotating, so he's probably just doing a low pass. Well, that's, there's Mac good, though, and. Um, this is a picture I took up. You know, Max has been doing like uh, passes on the lake, you know, hydroplaning the wheels on, on, a, on his pond. I haven't seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, 
I not have that picture? Um, but here is the, so basically what happened was he went to Oshkosh in this airplane and Jason, were you the one who, uh, relayed what was happening? Um, I don't know. Well, here, here's a little video of them after they fixed it. He noticed oil coming out of the motor and the motors from the 1930s or forties. And so he decided to put down and luckily it was in this farmland. Where was he at? Uh, Douglas County. He ended up having a farmer help him like push his airplane all the way back to their barn. Yeah. So they, now that he's, uh, the one thing he said was, uh, the guy had a lot of tools. Yeah. So they had to see where the oil was coming from. So they disconnected everything and had the motor on a forklift and just pulled it off the firewall. And it was <laughs> the, the only problem was a hose. Um, I do not think they have a video of him taking off because I read somewhere where somebody said, I wish they had a video of him taking yeah. off. And is this a different story? I don't know, but uh, man, what a pretty bird. I got to think your butt would hurt after flying in that for very long though. Yeah. It's a long trip up to Oshkosh for him. So there's the shot. Exactly. Go that fast, you know? Yeah. How fast do you think it goes? Uh, maybe hundred. I don't know. This happens sometimes with these stories, but Mac uh, put it down in the field and they fixed it. And some people from Oshkosh uh, flew in, or I guess maybe drove in or something, helped him work on it. And then he got out of there. And so uh, I guess being a good pilot lets you know when you need to land and how to do it safely. Yeah. Okay. Dang. We're way over. Let me go get those goggles. I'll be all right. Be all right. BYB. There you go. Dead air time. I've got some people home. Oh, my wife's coming. There you go. I told her to wait outside, guys, till we're finished. How about that? We've got company in town this week. Hanging out with us. Checking it out. Yeah, I'm glad Mac made it, man. Luckily, that's the thing with airplanes, you know. Fly over landable terrain at all times, or at least, you know, to where you can make it back to some landable terrain. Snap the whip. <laughs> this is like three weeks worth of content here. Am I? Sh oh, I got to turn this off. Sorry. Check, check. There you go. Okay. So, um, this is the holy smokes. It's from Empire Hobby. And this is a headset that was licensed by Head Play. And I didn't mean to talk about these this week, so I don't have all the information up on them, but here we go. These are the, what the heck is that thing? All right, this isn't pro level now. View, View Op HD. View Optics. That's it. View Optics headset. And so I have some things to say. I've actually been uh, utilizing these. And mostly in the backyard, you can almost see what I was talking about, about the texture of this. This is different uh, than the original head plays. It feels more dense to me, like it could take a bullet, but it's it's foam. And by take a bullet, I mean better than the other ones. Uh, the diversity seems to work fine. I was in the backyard and had a great signal around trees and around the house. Um, I will say this. I was utilizing the fans because it was super humid and hot yesterday. I was out with them. And while the fans help a little, they could certainly help a lot more. If it were me, I would double the size on these guys. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's good that they have it, but um, it could be better. The one thing I have, I have some good things to say. And of course runs on a battery. Any battery will do. You need to tell it what battery you're using in the menu because it has a warning when you get low on voltage, which you don't usually see in goggles. You just have to personally be aware of your battery level. So you don't like die in the middle of a flight. Um, the menus, which aren't that different than what you normally see on a head play unit for me are more intuitive. So to get to the menu is the first button and that's the one I use the most, but when you're, uh, it has a channel scanner, which works really well and it's something that you need. And so that's the first button on the other side. So when I was in the goggles, it was super simple for me to go click and find a channel scanner. 
And then also there's a single button for, it has HD on here. And so for me personally, I, for this style of goggles to date, this is the best set of, of uh, head play type goggles I've had. I would recommend them. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, sometimes you get stuff and you're like, I'm going to sell this uh, because it's just not something that you personally love or know that you'll use. Somebody else will use it, just not you. Uh, for me, these are not something I would let go of. This is something that I, if I, when I go to Nash Bro, these will be next to me. So when somebody sits down and wants to fly with me, they can use these. That's um, impressive. Yeah. Also the, the DVR aspect, super valuable to me. Um, and probably anyone who wants to record what they do, if they do interesting things. And um, I think I showed this last week. It has a USB port right here. And so I can't see it, but I have a USB uh, uh, micro and full size or SD card adapter. And that just goes in there. And that's how you record everything and play everything back. And then it comes with an amazing amount of cables for batteries. And so this is the one that I'm using just because when I plug it in, it does it unplug itself and, and to turn it on, you just plug that in and then you get an led light up here and then you're hot in the goggles. Nice. So awesome. Uh, I've okay. used them multiple times this week. Very cool. All right. All right. All right. I think we need to call it. Uh, yeah. So we've gone a little bit past. Hopefully next week, what will have happened is Jason and I will head out to the field and we'll fly some stuff and we'll then give you more input. Now, Jason's already flown that quad and I flown mine just a smidgen, but uh, maybe we'll have video. And so you can look at some uh, FPV or in the goggles stuff. And um, I don't know how far we'll be along with reviews, but we might have something to share with you guys. So yeah. be sure to check back. Hey, also, um, you know, the hobby being what it is, uh, Jason and I are both really, uh, not that we haven't, I mean, our whole job is to talk about the hobby, but um, I'm looking at ways to strengthen the hobby and grow the hobby and make it bigger than what it is so that it's there for us and our kids and after we're gone. So if you have somebody that might want to know about the podcast, might be into stuff like we've been talking about, be sure to hit to share it and let them know about it. Maybe spread it on your Facebook page or wherever you are, or whatever you do, let people know so we can keep getting bigger, getting more stuff. That's cool to share with you on the podcast. Jason, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, watching the rain spoil any plans of flying. <laughs> nice. So that means you'll be on the Oculus for real. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I actually was thinking, uh, anyway, um, I want to thank Hobby King, our podcast sponsor and our YouTube sponsor, by the way, Jason, they are now officially our uh, mass email sponsor. They are our primary go. mass email sponsor. So that's a hundred thousand people in the mass email. If you're not a member of that, be sure and join our mass email. Um, I have a link to that on RC groups and um, that's it. Stay connected. Tell everyone about it. Grow the hobby. Be an ambassador. Shine a light. There you go. Bingo. Have bang fun. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host. We've been hanging out with Jason Lane from Lane's Plains was here, but he had to go save someone's life because that's what he does. And uh, that is it. Y'all have a great weekend. Thanks to everyone who joined us live and thanks to everyone who's joining us in the future. And we're out of here. I'm going to hit the button and say, some down now. Peace.